Well, good evening, everybody. I am Dr. Zayas from the Stoic Frog Gaming Channel. And on behalf of the Slytherin Group, welcome to the release stream for Command Desert Storm, recently released only a few hours ago. Hope everyone's doing well tonight. Good evening, Grey Knight. Good evening, Unknown, Lancer, Ring of Blood, Pixel. Good to see you guys. So today we're going to be playing the, uh, the recently released expansion, only a few hours old, to be honest with you, Command Desert Storm. We're going to be playing through one of the scenarios in the campaign. But first, before we get going here, we're going to uh, whet everyone's appetite, as I, as I usually do, with some very exciting, very, very rockin' uh, trailer for the Desert Storm expansion. All right, let's put up the trailer here. We're going to let this play for about a minute or so, then we'll come back and we'll go over what we're going to do tonight. So hang tight. Let's turn up the tunes. All right, so nothing gets you quite uh, quite as pumped up to play a commandment or an air naval operations scenario as some hardcore rock and roll music. So that was the trailer for Command Desert Storm, of course, released today, available on the Steam store or on the Matrix, uh, matrixgames.com web store. We're going to get going here. We're going to take you back. Just uh, sit back in your chair, close your eyes, and remember back to the 90s, where we were uh, in the process of reunifying Germany. We were in the process of launching the Hubble Space Telescope. And for the very first time, The Simpsons aired on Fox. Going all the way back to 1990, where the best picture was Dances with Wolves. And a very important birth happened uh, throughout this, uh, this event that we're simulating tonight. The birth of the 24-hour news cycle. Yes, we're going back to 1990, the first Gulf War. The Desert Storm campaign, and we're going to be playing tonight the second scenario in the expansion, The Thin Red Line. Now, in this expansion, there are 15 missions. We're going to be playing number two. Well, let's see what that is before I miss it. Paul Murdoch Yorn. Thank you for the follow. So there are 50 missions in the Desert Storm expansion. Uh, some of them are historical, some of them are hypothetical. Uh, the one we're playing tonight is called the Thin Red Line. It happens on the 15th of August in 1990, in the Middle East, of course, and the duration of the scenario is 38 hours. And it is one of those hypothetical scenarios that, uh, that I was just mentioning. Our goal tonight, uh, we're, not, uh, we're out of the preview realm, we're into the playthrough realm. So we're going to uh, give a brief overview of the scenario. We're going to look at the order of battle, come up with a plan and then get to it. My hope for tonight, we've got a three hour streaming window. My hope is that we're going to get through the entire scenario in that time, uh, successfully, of course. No one likes to lose on their on their uh, release stream, but uh, we're gonna try to get through the entire scenario tonight. I'll do my best to do that for us and hopefully we'll have some fun while we're, uh, while we're doing that. The scenario is moderately difficult, moderately complex and comes with a very brief scenario overview. So let's start off here with a quote from Charles Horner, the commander of the Coalition Air Ops of Des Desert Shield and Desert Storm. He says, I can tell you this, those first few nights were pretty strenuous. We didn't have any, we didn't have very much to stop them. If the Iraqis attacked, the plan was to hit the supplies 
for the attacking army to slow him down the way, that way. And meanwhile, we kept a full tank of gas in all of our cars and were ready to withdraw to Jeddah on the Red Sea coast. So that gives you a brief overview of what we're doing tonight. Uh, the, uh, the scenario effectively says what would happen if the Iraqis went into Kuwait and kept on going. The scenario description continues. Emboldened by his army's swift success in conquering Kuwait and its oil fields, Saddam Hussein considered a possible advance into Saudi Arabia. U.S. reinforcements had already started pouring into the country, but slower than required, because the Saudi monarch was unconvinced that Iraq would invade, as Saddam had privately assured the Saudis that Kuwait was his sole objective. A massive global air-sea lift operation was well underway, but forces and supplies were by ne necessity streaming in, in piecemeal, and simply getting the right people and the hardware where they needed to was challenging. In many ways, the rapid reaction force being assembled in Saudi Arabia during August and September was a ragtag motley crew of assets. Opposite them, just across the border, stood Iraq's best armored units, flush with confidence, ready to advance on a moment's notice. If that armored fist had crossed the border, what would the, th uh, would the thin red line have held? All right, so that is the overview for what we're doing tonight. We're going to play this hypothetical scenario at the beginning of the Desert Shield portion of the Desert Storm campaign. Again, August 15th, only about a week after Iraq had invaded Kuwait. So uh, only a very little time has passed, and we're going to play this hypothetical scenario to see if we can hold the stem the tide effectively as Iraq continues on into Saudi Arabia. All right, before we get into the briefing here, again, a nice compact briefing. Let me just take a look at chat, make sure I haven't missed anything. You're so glad your social issue three-hour lecture ended early so I could be here live. Well, Jack the Ripper, I'm glad you could be here too. Lands, you're getting out of the Marines in 1990, eh? It's hard to believe it's only been, it's been almost 30 years, eh? Time sure flies. All right. So we're going to go through the briefing now. As uh, quickly and as succinctly as I can. Coalition forces are continuing their buildup of equipment and personnel in the Middle East and Saudi Arabia in particular. It has been progressing at a steady rate in spite of the massive amount of material involved in transport from the U.S. and European countries. Covert intelligence shows indications that Iraq may be planning additional invasions due to its rapid and decisive action with Kuwait. This is, supposed, this is supported by significant increases in Iraqi's ground forces massing along its border with Saudi Arabia and the heavy transfer of aircraft to capture bases in Kuwait. Iraq's air assets there include F-16Cs purchased from Egypt during the Iran-Iraq War, SC-25Ks, and Mirage F-1EQ-5s. Within Iraq, there are several squadrons of MiG-29As, MiG-25Bs, or Ps, Foxbats, SU-24MK Fencers, and Mirage F-1EQ-6s. There have been increased communications between the Iraqi and Iranian governments. The substance of these talks is unknown, but could portend more military aggression from Iraq. The coalition's forces must prepare for any further incursions while military assets continue the build-up process. Alrighty. So like I said, the goal for tonight, uh, we are out of the preview phase, we're into the playthrough phase. I'm going to do a very brief, quick order of battle so we're all on the same page, so we all know exactly what assets we're dealing with here, and then formulate a plan and uh, move forward with that and see if we can't get, th get through this scenario uh, in, in this three-hour stream. It might be difficult, uh, the scenario is rather, uh, rather busy, there's a lot of stuff going on, so uh, let's get to it and uh, see if we can't cram it into three hours. So, starting off, in the Persian Gulf, we have Task Force LaSalle. We have one, two, three, four, five, six warships and a resupply ship, two destroyers, four frigates, and uh, the regular cadre of helicopters set for maritime surveillance and undersea warfare. We have two carrier groups further south in the Persian Gulf, CV-41, which is the Midway, and CV70 or CVN71, which is Theodore Roosevelt. Looking at the uh, CV41 complement of aircraft, of course, we've come to expect this from the preview stream. We've got F18As, we've got A6s, we have uh, F14 Tomcats, EA6 Prowlers, and uh, some E2C Hawkeyes. The various loadouts on these aircraft are uh, for, for the air to aerial warfare equipped Hornets and Tomcats, usually Sparrows and or phoenixes, uh, aerial uh, missiles, of course. And then for the ground attackers, we've got some smart 
munitions in the AGM-62 walleye, as well as, where are they here? As well as some uh, offensive ECM with the EA-6 Prowlers. All right, moving on to the Theodore Roosevelt. Again, the same compliment that we've come to expect over the last few streams. A Phoenix-equipped Tomcats, uh, jamming Prowlers, We've got Shrike-equipped Intruders, and Laser-guided Bomb-equipped Intruders, 500-pound bombs as well. Some Elant-capable S3s. KA-6 Intruders, set for tanking. More Tomcats. Hornets with Walleyes, and more Hornets with Walleyes. So lots of smart munitions. At this stage in the conflict, they haven't been expended as of yet. Looking at our task force, LaSalle, we don't really have any surface-to-surface -surface missile contacts, or sorry, surface-to-surface -surface missiles in storage or on these ships that we can actually use to attack ground targets. We've got harpoons and then the regular cadre of anti-air missiles. CV-41's task force, we have a few Tomahawks, roughly about 20 of them. And on the Roosevelt task group, roughly eight Tomahawks as well. So again... Um, the most the most of the punch in this scenario is going to come from our aircraft and from whatever, whatever ground forces we have assigned to us. All right, so those are the carriers, starting with the air bases. Uh, it looks like uh, everything in Kuwait is marked as hostile, so the invasion of Kuwait has been completed. Our closest air base to the border of Kuwait is King Fahd International Airport, 30 aircraft there. We have F-15Cs armed with sparrows. Uh, 18 A-10 Thunderbolts, armed with Mavericks. More Mavericks and more Mavericks, perfect for stopping an armored defensive. We have three Chinook helicopters armed with Rangers and troops. And three Compass Call Hercules aircraft armed for offensive ECM. Thank you for the follow, Jack the Ripper. It feels kind of weird saying that. <laughs> I feel like about 100 years ago, if you said, thank you for the follow, Jack the Ripper, you'd be in a lot of danger. All right. At Dauron, King Abdulaziz Air Base, we have 21 aircraft. KC-135 tankers, some Hercules with cargo, E-3 sentries, F-15C eagles with sparrows, more eagles with sparrows, and more tankers. So uh, it looks like King Abdulaziz is mainly a, a support base for our tankers with a few fighters thrown in. Moving into Qatar. We've got 21 aircraft. Six F-4G Phantoms from the Wild Weasel Squadron. We have... Actually, we've got a full set of 12. It looks like they're armed with AGM-45 Shrikes and AGM-88 Harms for anti-radiation or anti-radar purposes. We've got three Falcons with cluster bombs and six Recon Phantoms with cameras. Further down south into the United Arab Emirates at Al Dafra, 12 aircraft, 12 Falcons to be exact, six armed with Sidewinders, and the others armed with cluster bombs. Al Bantin, we've got six Aircraft, uh, Strike Eagles, Compass Call, Hercules, and Strato Tankers. Al Minhad, 12 Falcons. Actually, no, we've got 22 Falcons in various stages of configuration. Mainly ground attack uh, with 500 pound bombs, Mavericks, and cluster munitions. And at Al Ain International Airport, Hercules aircraft are uh, filled with cargo, six Strike Eagles. Uh, three in ground attack configuration, three in uh, air attack configuration, and two tankers. In Oman, two more Strato tankers, two more uh, Strike Eagles armed with sparrows. In Mazira, in Oman, we've got uh, more Eagles, more Strato tankers. Quite the distance these guys are going to have to cover to actually get to the battle space, roughly 500 nautical miles, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, actually, it's even worse than that, 700 nautical miles, so the tankers are going to come in quite handy in this scenario. Evening Gamer 1745, welcome to the stream. More Strike Eagles, Cluster Bombs, 
and uh, more strato tankers for extending our range. In the southwest of Saudi Arabia, we have King Khalid Air Base, where we've got the majority of our support aircraft, including the SR-71 Blackbird. We've got nine F-117 Nighthawks armed with Mavericks laser-guided bombs. We've got some Elant aircraft, some rivet joints, some strato tankers, some U-2s, four, four U-2s it looks like. Joint stars for Elant and sentries for airborne early warning. At King Fahad Air Base, we've got 14 aircraft, nine F-111D Ardvarks, armed with ground attack munitions, cluster bombs, and regular bombs. Some offensive ECM armed Ravens, as well as two F-15C Eagles with a heavy Sparrow loadout. King Faisal, the final land base that's available to us in the Saudi Arabian Peninsula. Three aircraft, F-15Cs, armed with Sparrows. All right, moving north. Uh, into, into Turkey, we've got uh, one airbase at Inkerlik, 12 aircraft, six Tornado F3s. As far as I'm aware, this is probably one of the very few coalition forces that are not American in this, uh, in this scenario. Uh, the six uh, Tornadoes armed with uh, an anti-air loadout, two Skyflash Super Temp Mod missiles. Let's take a look at those, not too familiar with them. 55 nautical mile range, semi-active radar homing. All right, so pretty, pretty much, uh, well, not a clone of the Sparrow, but uh, uh, operationally speaking, pretty similar in function. And then, of course, we've got more sentries and more uh, tankers. The final piece to this scenario is located in the, uh, in the Mediterranean. CV-60, which is the uh, USS Saratoga. She's got a carrier group all out here in the Mediterranean. 33 aircraft available to us. Again, pretty much what we're used to seeing on carriers in this scenario. Tomcats with Phoenixes, Tomcats with Sparrows, Hornets with cluster munitions and uh, smart munitions, uh, standoff walleye missiles, intruders with Mavericks, Prowlers for jamming, and a C2A Greyhound, which is unavailable. Now, one difference between the uh, Saratoga here in the Mediterranean and the other two carriers in the Persian Gulf, we have one of our Tomcats loaded with a TARPS recon pod for reconnaissance. Not, uh, well, don't know if she's going to be good at identifying targets. She's got a five nautical mile range, second generation TV camera for ground search and surface search. We'll have to see. I mean, we've, we've got a bunch of U-2s down south in Saudi Arabia. We've got the SR-71 Blackbird, whose cameras, if I'm not mistaken, are much more capable than, uh, than what the TARP spot gives us. So looking at the SR-71, beautiful aircraft. Uh, 80 nautical mile range on very long range frame camera, second generation imaging for surface search and ground search. Yeah, I, th I think the U-2s and the SR-71s are probably going to be our better recon assets. But uh, we'll try out the F-14, always willing to try something at least once. All right, so the that is the uh, effectively the order of battle. Oh, we missed one airbase. Prince Sultan Air Base, 17 aircraft, 12 Strike Eagles from the United States Air Force. Cluster munitions, uh, regular 500-pound bombs. 2,000 pound bombs as well, and more cluster munitions, five F F-16s, which are part of the Air National Guard, seven, uh, sorry, five, five Falcons armed with uh, a Sparrow loadout. So that is the order of battle for our friendly forces. You're looking at the map, we have uh, no-fly zones over uh, all of Iraq, over Syria, over Lebanon, there is a unfriendly airbase in Jordan. Not sure what that's all about. I know that uh, I, th I think of all the uh, of all the Arabian states that eventually uh, came on board with this with this action. Jordan was the one that kind of stayed out of it, so maybe that's why they're marked as hostile. And of course, we've got a no-fly zone over Egypt as well. All right, there is one one airbase in Iran that's marked as friendly, up in the north of Iran. 
As we saw in the briefing, there is a mention of Ira uh, communications increasing between the Iraqis and the Iranians. So who knows what this airbase might be used for in the future. Thank you for the follow, Forza Life 73. Yeah, I'm looking forward to using that Blackbird. Uh, I, I've seen it now in, in two previews that I've done. I haven't had a chance to use her yet. Everyone wants to know, how fast does she go? How fast does she go? Up at a height of 90,000 feet, potentially. She can go Mach 3.22, which is 1850 knots. Nice. All right, well, we're going to use that to fly around the peninsula a little bit. But first, let's talk about how we're going to approach this scenario. Now, we know that there are Iraqi forces on the border of Kuwait because they're going to be pushing in towards, well, what do we have here? We've got oil fields. We've got what looks to be cities. Another oil field. All right, so I, I would assume the oil fields close to Kuwait are probably one of their major targets. And these cities as well will need to be defended. Looking out west, again, more cities. No oil fields out this way. Looks to be the oil fields are mainly concentrated around roughly 75 nautical miles from the border of Kuwait and Iraq. Oh. All right. We do have some ground forces in the area. Uh, Saudi Army Unit Number 1 and Saudi Army Unit Number 2. Right by the city of Kafji. Looks to be a, a mix of tanks, uh, M60 Patton's, AMX 10Ps, and Bradley fighting vehicles. Same for both. So we do have some, some ground forces on the border that can uh, maybe stem the tide a little bit. Saudi Ar Army Unit number three is further back at Al Jubal. Again, same setup, uh, Patton's, AMX's, and Bradley's. Much closer to King Fight International Airport, though, so if they do push down the coast, again, at least we have a unit in, in the path that can maybe stop them, uh, at least stem the tide a little bit and give us time to regroup. All right, so what are we going to do? What are we going to do? We've already said that the uh, Tomahawk store that we have is, is pretty low, so we're probably not going to be using guided missiles from our ships uh, in this scenario. First thing we're going to do, though, is set up a air combat patrol zone. I'm going to create a naval combat patrol zone in this area right here. Add new mission. We'll call it Airborne uh, Warfare Patrol Persian Gulf. Make it a patrol mission. That's all right. And we're going to turn off the one-third rule and only investigate contacts within weapons range. We're also going to turn off uh, allowing tanking from this mission. I want to keep, I want to keep my naval forces and my air, air force forces uh, separate in terms of tanking because some of our fighters in the southern area of uh, Saudi Arabia are really going to need those tankers. I don't want the Navy fighters eating all that fuel off them. Yeah, feared army unit number one. Yeah, feared. It's it's <laughs> obviously they're they're ranked in in terms of fierceness. Army unit number one being the most fierce. Army num unit number three being the most uh, less fierce, as it were. So we're going to turn off tanking for this uh, for this mission. And there's nothing else that we really want to uh, change. We can adjust this mission at any point in time, make it bigger, smaller. Uh, whatever we need to do, but we're going to leave it here for now. And of our aircraft on our carriers in the Persian Gulf, we're going to assign three Hornets and our Phoenix and, and three Tomcats as well. We're going to leave three other Tomcats in the background, uh, just ready to go, but not launched or assigned to any missions in case we need them for emergency aerial defense. From the Theodore Roosevelt, again, we're going to take some more Tomcats. Looks like only two ready. One's being readied in two hours. Let's see here. We've got, uh, here we are. We have more uh, Phoenix armed Tomcats. Let's assign these to the mission. And we've got no Sparrow laden Hornets. All right, so we'll assign all of these Tomcats then. There we are. A few in reserve if we need them, but mainly most of these aircraft assigned to the mission. Let's go back to the mission. Say let's keep two units of each class on station. All right, so that is set up. Now behind this mission, we're going to have a support mission. 
for our airborne early warning for any jamming we want to do and any eland aircraft that these carriers have on them which i don't think they they really have any but uh maybe the vikings uh, i seem to recall maybe one of the s3 vikings might have some uh, eland capabilities so set up support mission airborne early warning persian gulf again one third rules off keep one unit from each class on station turn off tanking Alrighty. Let's move it. That's a good spot to be. Nice and close to the fighter patrol, nice and close to the friendly uh, ship Samnet. Hey, Pit Fiend. Thank you, sir. Your luck is appreciated. I'll give it back when I'm done with it. Let's see. We have EA6 Prowlers. Let's assign two. To airborne early warning, we'll take the two Hawkeyes, assign them both. To airborne early warning. And I did say something about Vikings, did I not? Vikings, Vikings, ES3A Shadow. Yes, I was correct. They are capable of Elint. What kind of Elint? Let's see, they've got three sensors for a 500 nautical mile range on Elint technologies from the 70s and from the early 90s. They have a forward-looking infrared sensor, 30 nautical mile range, and a 200 nautical mile range on radar. All right, so that will be useful to us. We'll assign two to that mission. I think that's all we need to assign. We've got enough, uh, enough Hawkeyes. Yeah, I think we're okay with that. All right, let's take one quick dip back into that mission. Check the mission doctrine for MCON settings. We're going to say radar on. Well, we see them on, so our jammers actually jam. And our Hawkeyes actually radiate. Check that for the airborne patrol as well. Active radar, OECM is off, that's fine. Perfect. All right, so those are our carriers that effectively taken care of for now. I'm not sure if I want to move the LaSalle task group in towards the coast at all. They've got, well, they've got moderate SAM defenses. But uh, I, I don't really know what the, 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 the purpose of this task group is at the moment. So we're going to keep them where they are, although we do have the option of moving them in towards the coast. If, say, for example, Saudi Army Unit 1, the fiercest Saudi Army unit there is, if they need support, we at least can move into gun range and uh, give, show, give some uh, short bombardment support. I wonder if Saddam is going to have any subs in this scenario. There were none mentioned in the briefing. I assume operationally speaking, since this is only a week into the, uh, into the Desert Shield uh, campaign, uh, our, intelligence, uh, our intelligence gathering capabilities are still a little limited. I'm assuming no, because it wasn't mentioned in the briefing, but uh, maybe that will change. I don't know. Maybe that's the fatal mistake I'm going to make in this scenario. We'll have to watch and find out. All right, let's do the same thing with the Saudi Arabian coast. There's, there's two really er two areas here that I want to focus on. One is the oil fields south of Kuwait. And the other is this, this large nebulous area, which doesn't seem to have any oil fields, but has a lot of um, cities. So I want to have my main focus, of course, over the oil fields, and then a second set uh, of lesser focus, probably, in this area. So first thing we need to set up is an airborne early warning track. Always needs our always need our eyes in the sky. A W oil fields. And we'll make it a support mission. One third rules off. Keep one unit of each class on station. And we're going to yeah we're going to allow tanking for all of these missions. I'm okay with that. Let's go to King Abdulaziz, where we've got a lot of our support aircraft. These are a lot of our closely located aircraft, our support aircraft located. Let's put up two sentries on that mission. We're going to put up... Well, 
that's all we really have. We've got sentries, we've got tankers, we've got Hercules that we don't really need to do anything with just yet. So we'll put those sentries there. We're also going to go back to here at uh, King Fahd International Airport. We've got two Compass Call offensive ECMs. We'll assign these two. So we'll have some jamming from this location as well. Don't really need those just yet. Tankers, we're going to set up a separate tanker track. All right, so that's our airborne early warning. We're going to set up a, a separate tanker track. Are we? No, let's just use that as our, as our tanker track as well. Why not? Why not? I'm just going to make the same mission uh, twice in the same area. Let's just use the mission that's already created. Why not? We'll assign him. Assign these three. These three. And these two. All right. So airborne early warning and tanker track. A two for one. Oh, one thing I want to do before I forget, make sure the mission doctrine is set properly. Active radar. Oh, I picked the wrong mission. There we are. Active radar, active OECM. Perfect. Let's also set up another airborne early warning track in this area to the west. Add a new mission. Make it a support mission. Again, same setup as before. Allow it to tank, that's fine. And then we'll turn uh, some of our tankers on the east side of the coast, or on the east side of uh, the peninsula, loose on that mission. Some compass calls as well for jamming, in case we need it close by. More strato tankers. More strato tankers. All the strato tankers. All right, I think that should be good enough for at least uh, our initial needs. I will sign these guys as well. There we are. All righty, so we're all tanked out. We're all airborne early warning out. Let's talk about air combat patrols. I'm going to set a uh, cap zone over the oil fields. Modify it a little bit here so it's a bit closer to the actual oil fields. Don't want to get too close to the border with Kuwait. We're not sure what kind of aerial defenses they might have or ground-based aerial defenses either. Add new mission. Again, airborne warfare patrol for oil fields. Let's keep four units of each class on station. Actually, no, we'll do two. Four might be overkill. One third rule off, investigate contacts outside patrol, no. Investigate contacts within weapons range, yes. Now we're allowed to tank. Number of aircraft that investigate unknown contacts, one flight is fine. Engage hostiles is all flights. That's fine too. Let's make sure we've got our mission doctrine set properly. For BVR engagement logic, we're going to crank if possible. I'd say that's all right. We're going to be armed with sparrows, so we're not going to be able to crank and uh, drag 
Uh, very likely. It's going to be more of a crank if possible and continue heading towards the enemy enemy, uh, enemy fighter. We'll keep that set as it is. Weapon state is going to be mission-specific weapons. Let's go with all BVR standoff weapons have been expended. Disengage immediately. All right. MCON or active radar, that's fine. And now we have to assign some fighters to that patrol. Easiest ones to assign are at King Fod Air Base. They're the closest. F-15C is four of them ready to go. Assign the mission. At Dauron, we've got three more Eagles. We'll assign those to mission. Oh, and we've actually got six, not three. Assign them. That's I think that's 10 in total. And then at Doha International Airport. Uh, no fighters, all strike aircraft. All right. So that's a good place to start. I think uh, 10 to 12 Eagles should keep those oil fields pretty well protected initially. Now in terms of this wide expanse in this area, I feel like we're going to use King Faisal Air Base and we're going to use the Carrier Task Force. Let's move the Carrier Task Force closer to the coast. Cut down that range. We're looking at the range from the Carrier to the area I want them to patrol. It's roughly 500 nautical miles. That's quite the jaunt. So we'll get them closer to the coast and uh, cut down that journey. Going to once again create a combat air patrol zone. In this area, we're going to move it actually a little more west. A little more west. I'm a little hesitant to put it too close to this airbase in Jordan. It is marked as hostile, so I can imagine there'll be a surprise or two waiting for us there. All right, make it a patrol zone again. One third rule is off. Let's keep two units of each uh, class on station. Again, same setup as, as, as before. Mission doctrine. Gonna go, we're gonna go shotgun. All BVR standoff weapons have been expended. Disengage immediately. And everything else will stay the same. Alrighty, I think that's all set. All we have to do is assign our aircraft from the Saratoga group in the Mediterranean. Assign these four Tomcats armed with Phoenix missiles. And these three Tomcats. All right. All right. King Faisal, of course, we've got uh, two Eagles all set to go. We'll launch them as well. And down at King Fahad. Two Eagles, yeah, we'll assign them as well. Why not? Why not? All right. So we've got uh, airborne early warning. We've got jamming. We've got uh, an electronic intelligence assigned to missions. Uh, that are uh, well behind the border, hopefully in a safe area. We have also have uh, combat air patrols set up on the west, over the oil fields, and over the Persian Gulf as well. Actually, one thing I forgot to do from King Khalid, let's add our joint stars to the, to the West Saudi Airborne Early Warning Patrol, as well as our rivet joints. All right, perfect. Hey, good evening, the smell of magic. Just working through Northern Inferno looking to see what to get next day. Eh? New to command, well, welcome. Welcome. Hope you're enjoying Northern Inferno. That's how I started too. So I cut my teeth. Word of warning though, once you start playing command, you just simply can't stop. Evening, Hoffman. Yeah, most of Europe is asleep at this point. Only the most dedicated command players in Europe are, are still up. 
All right, so we've got uh, all of our, our airborne early warning, jamming, intelligence gathering aircraft all set to go. We've got all of our combat air patrols set where we want them as well. The final thing we need to do is set some recon patrols with our SR uh, SR-71s and our U-2s. And what do I want to do for that? We're probably gonna need some recon in this area here because they're gonna bust through down south of Kuwait, I'm, I'm betting. We're gonna make it uh, push on the oil fields. That's also a good bet. So we're going to start with that. Let's set a rally point. It's a single, a single reference point. And we'll call this, actually let's place it a bit further back in case I forget about it and my, uh, my SR-71 or my U-2 goes right up to the front. I don't really want that. Add a new mission. I'm going to call this Recon Rally. Make it a support mission. Off with the one-third rule. Tanking is allowed. Mission doctrine, we will allow active radar and active jamming. Awesome. Okay, and then we're going to go back down south to King Khalid Air Base. Find our SR-71s. We're going to launch manually and assign manually. We'll take one Blackbird. We'll take... one TR-1A Dragon Lady, which is of course a U-2, and one U-2R as well. Uh, launch individually, there we are. Did I launch you? I did not launch you. Get up in the air. Awesome. Okay, so that is heading towards the east side of things. Uh, as for the west side, now we're going to leave it pretty, uh, pretty naked for the moment in terms of eyes. We have a lot of Recon Falcons in Qatar. Available to us too, so I might launch a bunch of them for uh, see if they can. Uh, well, they're closer for one, they're faster for another. As well, aside from the SR 71s, they're faster than the U2s for sure. They do have their own set of recon pods as well as side looking radar. So maybe we'll launch one RF 4C Phantom as well. Launch individually, off he goes. All right. So it's been 45 minutes since we started the stream. And we're finally at the point where we can hit the go button and get this clock moving. Like I said, I'm hoping to put a big chunk of time into this tonight and get this as close to complete as we can. Uh, we're out of the preview phase, we're into playthrough phase, and uh, that's what I want to do uh, to try to, well, get it as complete as I possibly can. So here we go. Let's see if it blows up on us. Whoa, 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 whoa. Before I do that, always, always have to remember to adjust my sound. Otherwise, I'm going to blow out your eardrums. Let's move that down to here. As always, guys, if the, if the game sound is too quiet or too loud, please let me know. All right. Bumping the clock up. Waiting for that first send. Want to make sure I don't... Uh, Need to adjust the sound, so we're not going to put the time compression up too much just yet. Alright, that's a little loud. Let's uh, fix that. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Oh, you readjusted yourself, did you? Well, that won't do. Did you stick this time? Yes, you did. All right. So our initial aircrafts are launching from the carriers, F-14s, soon to be Hawkeyes and intruders. Yeah, just a little loud still. Sorry, guys. We'll get this mix right eventually. And we'll try that. If that's too quiet or too loud for you guys, let me know, but I think that's going to be okay. All righty. I think things are going as planned. Let's up the time compression again. All right. Clock's paused. 
we have our first special message of the scenario. It says, Back channel sources indicate Iraq is massing forces along its border with Saudi Arabia for an invasion. Expect air and land incursions into Saudi territory beginning on or about 15th of August at 2100 hours. Now, presently local time, it is 2300 hours, if I'm reading that right. So either way, invasion is probably close. Specific invasion goals are unknown at this time. All right. Let's leave it paused for a sec. Zoom in on Kuwait. Yeah, local time says 2300. We were told at 2100 they would start. So maybe it's Zulu time they mean. Maybe that's, uh, maybe that's the time frame. Let's see here. 2100 hours, probably Zulu. So we have about an hour or so before they cross the border. Gives our aircraft plenty of time to get in place. Uh, well, I'm thinking about it too. Let's actually get our radar, the radar on our ships running. No reason not to. All of them have radars turned on now. Covering, of course, all of Kuwait, so we'll have a pretty good sense of what's happening when it's happening. First, a bogey detected by an F-14 Tomcat. Detected over west. All right, running at 300 knots, 19,000 feet. Doesn't sound like it's a uh, hostile contact. Certainly not acting aggressive towards us. We'll let it uh, let it be for the moment. See if we can get a positive ID. More aircraft have been detected. Uh, launches from Kuwait. Running at full afterburner. Let's mark him as hostile. See if our Tomcats want to take care of him. Let's see, Tomcats do have the range. They're not engaging. Let's go back to the mission editor here, look at the airborne patrol for the Persian Gulf. Turn on investigate contacts outside a patrol area. I think that'll do it. There he goes. There he goes. All right, Phoenix missiles out. The multi-roll aircraft running at full afterburn. We've got more launches. F-16C, Block 32 Falcon. As we were told in the briefing, these are from Egypt, given to Iraq during the Iraq-Iran War. Capable of loading sparrows, sidewinders, and general purpose ground attack munitions. Uh, question, the sound effects. These are actually uh, custom sound effects. Um, for those of you who remember Rory's stream back in November of last year, late last year, I noticed that he was running uh, some custom sound effects and I asked him about it and he has a forum thread where these sound effects are, are freely available. So I installed them and I like them quite a lot, actually. Uh, the red alert siren that has plagued so many command players for so long, have uh, this effectively takes care of that. It turns it into a much softer sound, but still gets the purpose across or the, the alert across that you're under threat. So uh, they are a custom sound pack. Um, I'm not sure the link off the top of my head, but I can link that to you maybe eventually. If I can uh, remember where I left it. It is not Desert Storm specific. No, this is this is my client that I've, I've customized using uh, a, a sound pack. They do, yeah. They're, they're much, uh, much, uh, what's the word? Not softer, but they're more nuanced. You don't jump out of your chair when there's a missile detected because the, the, the klaxon is blaring in your face. I've dealt with that for what three years now, playing command. So it's, it's a nice change of pace. Let's 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 be honest about that. All right, so I have to make the same changes on the mission in Saudi Arabia so that my planes engage. Let's find the oil fields. There it is. Make sure they're set to investigate contacts outside the patrol area. And off they go. 
All right. Mr. Rodan number one is uh, our Falcon, our, our Recon Falcon. Or not Falcon, Fandom. The other, the other PH. Let's unassign him from the rally point. Move him north. See if we can't find anything with his fancy sensors. We're going to make sure his radar is on, though. Side-looking radar. Phoenix is out on these two aircraft, both F6, F-16Cs. Another unknown bulky running at, uh, well, just over the sands, a uh, thousand feet above ground level. First Phoenix is going in. Missed. All right, so we have one Tomcat pushing in on the Falcon. Tomcat is firing a Phoenix. The enemy F-16 is firing a Sparrow. We should win that battle. We'll force the, uh, the F-16 to break his lock. Sparrow should go dumb. All right, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, so here, here's our first... Well, let's clear this up a little bit. This is a little confusing. Let's uh, turn off... Is it... Mission area and course, let's... Is that it? No, that's not it. How do I lose all of these extra data links? Or all of these extra lines on the map? No, that's not it either. Targeting vectors? Whoa, that's it. Let's go for none. All right. So what is happening here? We have a Phoenix missile fired at max range on these F-16Cs. Because this Phoenix has been assigned to this target, my F-15s that are, are now engaged offensive against this Falcon are not firing because one missile has already been assigned to them. So my Falcons are in the process, or my Eagles are, sorry, my Eagles here are in the process of walking into Sparrow missiles. Not the best plan. Um, so we're going to need to unassign these guys from the mission manually. We're going to run them back this way. Both sets of eagles. Minimum altitude after burn it. All right, what's happening over here? Our Tomcat has missed the F-16C. Two more missiles have missed. The F-16 also missed his shot on the Tomcat. All right. Missile missed our F-15s as well. Let's unassign them from their waypoint F-1 to manually attack and send them in on these. This F-16, which just dodged the, uh, dodged the Phoenix. Wait, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so... Again, this is this needs a bit more manual intervention by me. Now, the Phoenixes that are roughly 80 nautical miles away are firing on these, this Falcon here, which is roughly 10 nautical miles away from my Eagles. Okay, we're going to have to manually engage move these guys back up to max altitude, military speed, unassign them from the auto attack, shift F1, and say fire a sparrow before it's too late. The other group of eagles we can send back to the patrol zone. They are out of danger now. This falcon is not being attacked. Why not? Sparrow. Okay, let's fire a sparrow on him as well, manually. What is happening? Okay, missile detected. Shouldn't be a big deal though, it just lost its radar lock. Alright. Another sparrow out. Go ahead. 
what happened here? We shot down the first conflict, or sorry, the, the first uh, the first victory of the conflict. Well, the entire U.S. Navy has finally shot down a single F-16. We're victorious. There we go. The second casualty of the conflict for the enemy forces. Another F-16 is down. All right, let's fix our missions because that was a bit of a, well, bit of a cluster of something. Turn off investigate contacts outside the patrol area. Same for this one. Uh, let's see here. Ooh, attack distance. Don't know what that does. We're going to leave that off just in case it, it does something I don't expect. All right, so we're going to get these eagles assigned again to their original mission, which is the Airborne Patrol, the oil fields. They've got one sparrow left. The other group has a full complement of four sparrows. These Tomcats, still well armed. Still in good shape, all right. So the Falcons that were on us have been destroyed. But... We've got two sand skimming contacts, unknown bogies, heading towards. That looks to be heading towards both oil fields. Let's mark these as hostile. And actually, while we're while we're at it, let's just uh, take this group of eagles that only have really side wonders left with them or to them. Send an intercept course, see if we can't positively ID what they are. All the Phoenix missiles are. On their way. All of them. We waste four Phoenixes at a time. All right, well, we fired our one remaining sparrow. It's now gone. And I don't see what it was attacking because it went blind just before. All right, so we have to get in within visual range. Plenty of, plenty of side wenders left. We'll be able to take care of these guys, no problem. During the, the uh, air battle, uh, during, the, during the intense initial air battle in this scenario, uh, we've also spotted some mobile units moving south. Looks like they're heading directly for Saudi Army Unit 1 and 2. I guess we'll test the Saudis' army units' uh, metal out. We'll see how good they are, see if they're capable of stemming the tide. Our recon Phantom is getting close. No, west again. Commercial jet has been spotted. Okay, so there are, there are neutral contacts, commercial contacts in this scenario we need to be wary of. Can't just be marking everything as hostile. It's also a mobile combat or mo mobile contact at the airbase in Jordan. Probably a SAM of some sort. We'll take care of it if we have to. May fifty mainstays keeping uh, keeping the skies lit above Iraq. So far, nothing else has been spotted. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We missed our we missed our target here. It's a bogey. We don't know what it is yet. It's not emitting. I don't think it is not. Let's turn our eagles back around. Maximum afterburner. <sighs> Let's assign these set these eagles from this mission. Move them up here to intercept. Oh, and they're firing sparrow missiles. Awesome. Of course they would. I had marked them as hostile, I guess. They, uh, they can... They're well within their, their parameters to fire on them. We do have a positive ID, though. They are recon phantoms of Iraqi origin. Don't know what they're doing. Maybe they're trying to get a fix on the oil field. wonder if that's a thing. All right, let's tell a set of eagles to attack. Go ahead. 
Meanwhile, asleep at the wheel, our recon fa uh, phantom has walked into another seemingly F-16 plotted ambush. Let's move him out to sea. Afterburn, minimum altitude. And we need, we need a hero. We need a hero. Who's going to be our hero? Well, we've got no phoenixes left. Got sparrows. Two sparrows here. Let's send the sparrows in after the F-16. Not a sign from the mission. And we'll just auto-attack and let the, uh, let the Tomcat take care of it. Sidewinder's out on the Recon Phantom, heading towards the northern oil field. A hit, but the Phantom's not down yet. There he goes, finally. Sending these Eagles home, they're down to two Sidewinders. And the final Phantom is defensive and down. Awesome. Another F-16 in the air. More ground units being detected. We're going to assume these are hostile. And we're going to send Saudi Army Unit 1 after them. The most ferocious Saudi Army unit there is. Our other eagles have signed wonders left. We have more eagles on the way to relieve them. Let's send them home. I don't want to get into a Sidewinder versus Sparrow fight. So we'll send them home just to, uh, to save there. Make sure we uh, don't do anything silly. Keep on going, Phantom. Keep on going. The F-14s have arrived, though. Sparrow's out. Oh, our Phantom took a hit, but he's not down. 35.2% damage. Losses radar, losses camera. His radio is damaged, and one of his engines is destroyed. He's down to one engine. He's going RTB. Got a positive ID on these units heading into Saudi Arabia. Two armor sections. Two mechanized infantry sections. Almost in range too, the Saudi Army unit will uh, make their presence felt shortly. All right, shots out. Ground, oh. Al-Jubai invasion force defeated or recaptured. Okay, well that was easy. The most ferocious Saudi Army Unit 1 has completely turned this enemy armor and mechanized infantry group into friendly forces. Now that is ferociousness. That is some supreme talent right there. Let's do the same with this, uh, this army unit. Mark them as hostile. Saudi Army Unit 2. Engage. All right, our Tomcats missed with their sparrows. We've got three Sidewinders left. Moving into engage now. Sidewinder out. Now, what is going on here? F-16 is coming out of Kuwait again. Watching on our eagles who are running back home. All right, let's unassign this Falcon from the mission set. Just tell them to manually attack the F-16 so they run in quicker. Other side wender out on the F-16 from the Tomcats. Hit, no kill. Machine gun fire finally took down the F-16. All right, these guys are heading home. Job well done, boys. Let's 
The Eagles are engaged defensive. Sparrow missed. But now you've made them angry. You've made them very angry. Let's assign these Eagles from... Unassign them from RTB. Tell them to manually attack this F-16. Almost in Sidewinder range. Alright, Sparrow dodged. Sidewinder out. Yeah, we've done it again. The Mulayan and Naraya invasion forces defeated or recaptured. Take a pause here. Lots of stuff going on initially. So Saudi Army Unit 2, not as ferocious as Saudi Army Unit 1, uh, still uh, making themselves felt on the battlefield, capturing the uh, Iraqi forces coming south through Kuwait. All right, so once these units get, get, get captured, we effectively uh, take them over. I wonder if there's anything else we can actually find in this area and uh, and assume control over. I mean, if, if things keep going the way they're going, we might actually have a very large, very large army useful to us. Maybe we can reinvade Kuwait in a few hours. That is a possibility. All right. So what happened here? One of our eagles took a hit. I do believe. Indeed, he has. 15% damage. Radio's been destroyed. He's done in one Sidewinder. Sidewinder out on his compatriot. Compatriot survives. Final Sidewinder removes that F-16 from consideration. All right. So, unlike my last preview stream, which was roughly five days ago, I have yet to lose. An F-15 Eagle. So, <laughs> that feels pretty good. These guys are heading back home out of ammunition. The group of Eagles that was on the way to rescue them can now return to their mission guarding the oil fields. There are more unknown contacts heading towards our oil fields. Look to be more phantoms, more recon phantoms. They're heading just above the dunes at a thousand feet above ground level. Our eagles that are on their way will uh, take care of them. Getting a little focused though on the east side of things, a lot of action there. West side, pretty quiet. Nothing actually happening just yet. Plenty of eagles in the area, plenty of tomcats in the area, very well defended if uh, they do try something on their western flank. got our tankers in place, we've got our airborne early warning in place, we've got our jammers in place. Feeling pretty good so far. There is another F-16 that's launched. This group of two Tomcats is very close, uh, just on the edge of their Sparrow range, so we'll get them out of there. The F-4, uh, our Recon F-4 Phantom that has been damaged is on its way back home too. Let's reassign the set of two Hornets. Unassign them for the mission. Tell them to manually attack this F-16. That should take care of him. Now the uh, the the gunshots that you're hearing and the damage reports that you're seeing in the in the game log are actually weapons that were in flight when we captured the enemy units. So Saudi Army Unit Two, while they forced most of the enemy units to surrender to them, have also destroyed most of them with the weapons that were in flight when the enemy surrendered. <laughs> so we're down to one mechanized infantry platoon, which is okay. It's it's better than nothing. Group over to the east, two armored units to be uh, T-72 main battle tanks. Very useful, very useful. Let's uh, move closer to them. We'll bring you guys closer as well. And hopefully we'll, we'll find uh, more enemy units in the, uh, in the area. Let's move these infantry up towards the air base, see what they can see. See what these guys get some uh, ground-based recon going. in this cap zone because we're uh, 
We want our eagles to hurry up. Let's tell them to hit afterburner. Go faster, please. Missile detected 16 nautical miles by our infantry division. Oh. This falcon has turned south. He's once again attacking our RTB eagles. These poor eagles are just having a rough go. Hornets are a little too far away to engage them just yet. We're going to have to unassign this set of eagles from the oil fields yet again. Tell them to manually attack that falcon. Why they're not firing, I don't know just yet. Let's hit Control F1. Manually attack. Bearing only launch. Why is that? Ah, oh, my radar's off, that's why. Radar on. Now we can fire. Missile out. All right, our eagles live to fight another day. As does his F-16 pursuer. More sparrows out. All we have our sidewinders left. Sidewinder versus sidewinder. We hit him. Not enough to take him down. Gunfire finished him off. All right. Now, while we were having that little fun with the F-16s, these, uh, well, whatever these are. This one's running at 920 knots at 36,000 feet, probably hostile. We have a SAM site, a Hawk, an IHOC battalion. I feel like we can mark this guy's hostile. And we'll ask questions later. Same with these guys. Now this group of eagles has two sidewinders left. Let's change their rules of engagement. I'm going to say, use everything and then use your guns and then go home. Because we need the, we need, these are the only guys in the area to defend our oil fields right now. We actually need to launch more aircraft to take care of that. See, these hornets are going to be re-diverted to the oil field defense mission. There they go. And these guys are going to be reassigned as well. They only have two sidewinders and a bunch of cannon ammunition left. Against recon phantoms, that should be enough. This The only thing worrying me is this guy. They assume it's, a, it's an F-16 of some sort. But our IHOP battalion should be able to take care of them. In the meantime, let's find more resources to send towards the oil platforms to defend them. Maybe the aircraft coming in hot is a friend. I don't know, Colody. I don't know. That looks pretty unfriendly to me. A full afterburner. Heading towards my oil fields. I don't think so. We're going to assume hostile. Uh, I need more airborne defense assets. What do we have at Prince Sultan? We have five F-16s. Let's launch these three. Get them up in the air. Aldafra will also launch these six F-16s. As we'll get them all in the air right now. They've got a long way to go to get there. It's going to take them probably an hour and a half to uh, reach the destination. Launch as group. All right. Let's see, I hawk out. I hawk missed, but he's attacking F sixteen C. So we were correct. It was not a friendly.
Eagles heading fast into Sidewinder range. Sidewinder out. Hit and kill. Sparrow out from the Hornets that are coming to the uh, coming to the party from the from the uh, from the Persian Gulf. IHawks getting on the action as well. Gunfire hit. Missile missed. There we are. All right. So what's happened? We've shot down two more Recon Falcons above our oil fields, plus another F-16. We have uh, a fire control radar locking us up from this aircraft, most likely another F-16. How many of those things do they have? Let's reassign. Can we reassign our Hornets? They've got two Sparrows left. Let's reassign them from the mission to the manually attack. Why are we not engaging? Okay, unassigned from the attack. Let them move. Why are we not unengaging? Come on. There we are. I want you to turn this way, please. Huh. You are, I unengage you and then you go back to engaged offensive. Unassign. Unit has no orders unassigned. And then you go back to engaged offensive. Is that because there's a missile in the air? Blind, and it's down. So maybe our Hornets will be able to move after this. Either way, another special message. Top secret. Don't tell anybody. Intelligence sources indicate that the Iraqi presidential transport is scheduled to take off on a flight to Tehran sometime after 2200 hours on August 15th. So one hour from now. There is speculation that this consists of an Iraqi delegation that will attempt to enlist Iran as a cooperating partner for further Iraqi territorial expansion. We are placed on alert to detect such a flight and prevent it from reaching Tehran. Extreme prejudice is authorized to complete this mission. Further information will be provided if and when it becomes available. All right, so we have an hour to prepare. An hour to prepare. Let's see what we have available to us. Uh, our carriers are probably our best bet because we've got Phoenix missiles which can reach out and touch somebody. We have four ready to go. Let's unassign this guy from his mission. We have four Phoenix loaded Tomcats all set to go in this grouping. And the other ones are in the air right now, I do believe. On the Theodore Roosevelt, we have another two set, not assigned to a mission, so I can use them. And a third. All right, so if worse comes to worse, I've got seven or eight Tomcats set to go. The presidential transport is going to try to make it up to Maribad International Airport in Tehran. The distance from my carrier to Maribad, 500 nautical miles. The ability of my Tomcats to reach that area, I'm assuming is all right. I'm assuming... So with a strike loadout, it's at 670 nautical miles, so we'll be right on the edge of our range. I'm okay with that, though. We'll put some KA-6s up if we need some fuel. We are, however, going to have to uh, go right into a rainy airspace. I don't know if that's going to set anything off. All right, so we'll deal with that at 2200 Zulu. In the meantime, another F-16 has made it into our air defense zone. We have only cannon ammunition left. These Hornets are refusing to do anything for me. Unassigned from the mission, they are now unassigned. There we go, they're finally unassigned. Attack this F-16, please. Missile out, probably too late for this F-15C. Yeesh. We're going to lose an F-15. Oh, no. 
96% penetration to our engine. That sounds pretty serious. And it was. We've lost our first F-15C. Sorry, guys. The perfect airborne... Uh, <laughs> The perfect aerial warfare record of the F-15 has just been tarnished. Yet again, I do this every stream. I always lose at F-15. Alright, but either way, the Hornets will avenge. Or, the F-15 on his tail will avenge. He's hitting with gunfire. There he goes. F-16 shot down by 20mm Vulcan Burst. Awesome. All right, so the remaining eagle will go home. He's out of weapons. Only six, uh, six, uh, six rounds left in his uh, Vulcan cannon. Everything else has been expended. Now I will say, if the Hornets had reacted when he wanted them to react, that eagle would probably still be alive. So, the Navy is totally to blame for that one. Totally to blame. Four side, four side winders left on the Hornet. Almost no fuel. Five minutes left before bingo. Let's just send them home. Another set of eagles is out to defend the oil fields. We are rapidly running out of ready resources. One eagle there. One eagle there. Two Tomcats there. More Tomcats heading to station. All right. Looking back west, aside from the unknown mobile contact around the Jordanian airbase, nothing else has happened out west. My U-2 and my SR-71 are on their way to the uh, to the borders, so we can soon begin our recon of the borders and find out where the enemy ground units are coming across. Another bogey detected. Looks to be another recon phantom running just above ground level. Let's move this up here more. We want to engage them earlier. And you, are you a falcon or are you a phantom? <laughs> a blackbird call sign is blacky one. Indeed it is. Indeed it is. All right, probably another recon phantom still going just above ground level. I know contacts entering our aerial our, our, our patrol zone. For some reason that has not interested my eagles. There they go, they're finally interested. Kicking it up to military speed on an intercept course to identify what these aircraft are. While we're waiting for them to do that, let's actually go into our side doctrine for our entire set of forces, go back to the weapons release authorization tab, and fix some of our accuracy problems. Aim 54A Phoenix. Let's see, your automatic firing range. Let's set that to, say, 60 nautical miles, so we actually have so we actually have a better chance of hitting our targets. If we launch our missiles at a, a maximum range, of course, the chance they're actually going to hit, reach their target and have a destructive impact is uh, fairly low. So we'll wait a bit longer to get our enemy targets into range, and then we'll launch at 60 nautical miles instead of 90 or 100. Same with our sparrows. Instead of 50, let's go with 35. Thirty-five and our other sparrows, the F variant. Thirty-five as well. We're taking a bit more of a risk by having these missiles not fired till they're a little closer. should be good. Inherit from the above weapons release authorization. Done and done. There. Now we should see 
Once these are marked as hostile, our sparrows will not fire until 35 nautical miles away, which should increase their accuracy. <clears throat> All right, let's just mark them as hostile. We know they're hostile. We know they bad. We know they bad. Commercial flight, mainstay, nothing else in the sky just yet. Sparrows out at 35 nautical miles on this bogey, most likely a recon phantom again. Second sparrow out, the other recon phantom. There we go, one shot, one kill, what I'd like to see. Ah, oh, we missed. Well, 50% isn't bad. We'll fire another sparrow off. Is indeed a recon phantom, finally confirmed. There we go. Another guy down. All right, we've got one sparrow left, four sidewinders left in this group of eagles. Oh man, let's get... So we, we have a bit of a, a numbers issue now. These eagles are rearming. The Eagles at uh, King Abdulaziz, however. We've got two left that are ready to go. Sitting on the tarmac, all set. But because they're in separate groups, they will not trigger the mission. One here, and one here. So we're just going to assign these guys, in, assign these guys manually to the mission and launch them individually. Off they go. Game seems to be complaining about your F-16 something with visual range doctrine. Shotgun weapon state has been set to BVR. Oh, okay. So my F-16s, whereabouts are they? They were coming from Eldafra. They have launched. They are somewhere. Where did my F-16s go? Anybody see my F-16s? Anybody? We got Hornets. These are the ones from Prince Sultan Air Base. Hmm. I seem to have misplaced my Falcons. Okay, well, let's fix the issue anyways. Um, the issue is that the airborne patrol for the oil fields doesn't like my change of the weapon state doctrine. So we're going to say, whatever the default was, what was the default? Inherent Winchester mission specific, disengage immediately, done. All right, so that should solve that. Thanks, Colody. They're defecting. They're not defecting, they're going invisible. They, they've decided to cloak, I don't see them. Let's Let's use the order of battle. They've got to be somewhere. Can I search this? You, units by mission or task. Here we are. Where are you? That's not them. Apparently they're still at the airbase. They are. All right, so they, they took off, they landed, and they're getting ready for their second quick turnaround mission. Now that they're, they'll be ready in 20 minutes, they'll launch after that. Alrighty. Back to the war at hand. SR-71 is almost at our rally point. Let's unassign him from the mission. Send him this way, and this way, and this way, and this way. We're going to turn on his sensors. We want everything on. Radars, offensive ECM. His camera's always on automatically. Of course, he's at 85,000 feet, running 480 knots. All right, we can speed it up a tiny bit. Oh, we have detected something else, but first of all, we've got another special message. 
Saudi Arabia military reports that the communities of Al Kuryat and and Turaf have been captured by Iraqi forces. Iraqi tanks and infantry units are reported to have crossed the Iraqi Saudi border and are heading south. Specific Iraqi goals are uncertain, but are unlikely, but are likely to include the annexation of Saudi Arabian oil fields. Further information will be forthcoming as it develops. All right. So we've lost something. What have we lost? What have we lost? I don't see anything as flipped from blue to red. The blue still looks blue. The red still looks red. <laughs> it's yeah, that is the unfortunate part of receiving a top secret message. Yes, tofu. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Let's see. Uh, so we've we've picked up some uh, some mobile units, most likely. Uh, ground uh, armored and mechanized infantry units coming south from Iraq through Kuwait. We have an SR-71 to investigate for us. We also have, as any battlefield commander would want, 18 A-10 Thunderbolts to deal with them. Let's launch four. No, let's launch three. Assigned a mission, recon rally, just get them in the air, launch as a group. And we'll send them out and see what, what kind of damage they can do. All right, so where is our Blackbird? There he is. Let's divert him directly over this set of units. Let's send him really, really fast up to Mach 3.2. Because you're an SR-71 Blackbird. Why not? All right, speed it up a little bit. Not too much, though. We don't want the Blackbird to go back in time. All right, what are we detecting? We are detecting, based on the SR-71 Blackbird's sensors, which seem to be very good at detecting ground-based units, we are seeing mobile units in Kuwait running at 30 knots. We are seeing more mobile units crossing the border. We are seeing this group here, which is as yet unidentified. Another group here, which is unidentified. And we're picking up the, the planes at Ahmed Al-Jabbar Air Base in Kuwait. I can't hit the contact report button to see what's actually on the tarmac. So I'm assuming. So there, there's some attack aircraft on the tarmac spaces, as we're seeing from the camera. But I can't actually see them in the actual. Yeah, it's listed as a mobile unit, not a not a not an airbase. So for some reason, I can't look at the contact report. But either way. SR-71 doing some great work. Lifting the veil and showing us where the enemy units are. Man, oh man. That's very effective. Very effective, Mr. Blackbird. Back to cruise speed. Don't want to waste all this fuel. 40 minutes until presidential plane. Thank you for the thank you for the reminder. We're keeping some Tomcats in reserve for that specific purpose. All right, so what do we have to attack them with? We've got three Thunderbolts on their way. Probably should launch a few more. Get these guys in the air too. And we'll get another three. So we'll have nine Thunderbolts in the air, nine on the ground as reserve. The question is, why don't we just send this group of units into Kuwait to intercept this group of unknown mobile contacts? See, that's a great idea. Let's do it. We've grouped Saudi Army Unit 2 with the captured mechanized infantry unit. Let's send them into Kuwait. We'll do the same group up operation with Saudi Army Unit 1 and the captured uh, T-72 main battle tank units. Send them in here. Just to intercept, we're not going to actually run up to the air bases or anything. We're just going to intercept 
these mobile units on their way to the uh, to the east. Actually, let's maybe launch a strike from. Yeah, let's launch a strike from the mid from the midway. Got some walleyes. They'll stay safe from a distance. I think the range on the walleyes is thirty nautical miles or so. Send them off to the recon rally point. Launch as a group. Take a quick look at the weapon loadout. Thirty nautical miles. Yes, we're safe. All right. So Mr. Blackbird is discovering everything for us. Blackbird OP, please nerf. Picking up some SU-24s on the tarmac at the airbase here. Positive IDs on the kind of unit. We've got armor. At least two sets of armor in this group here. F-15 is launched, Rado Tanker, Compass Call, another F-15 Eagle. Here's our first set of A-10s, heading towards the rally point. Let's unassign them from that. Move them this way. Looking on the ground, the enemy ground forces are roughly 30 nautical miles away from the first oil field at Azdawi. The other units are actually a bit closer, 25 nautical miles. We've got roughly 45 minutes to get in place and take these units out before they actually reach the oil field. Does the SR7 give you more intel after it lands? I don't believe so. I think everything it does is real time. In game, at least. All right, let's keep the Blackbird running with these guys. So we keep the positive IDs. Other A-10s have launched. Again, we'll unassign from the recon mission. Send them up this way. Actually, these guys are rocking 36,000 feet. They've got a range of 800 nautical miles. These guys are rocking 2,000 feet. Let's get them up higher. Move you from the recon mission set and move you this way as well. Perfect. Good news, our thunderbolts are on the way. Bad news is going to take them a long time to get there. A6 intruders have launched. They're a little faster. Let's move them this way as well. Did you bounce with you, Grant? I've never seen one either. This is actually my first time playing one on stream. Kind of a shame to have such a fast plane just orbiting above this group of ground units. We want to keep them lit. We want to see what they're doing. We want to be able to target them with uh, standoff weapons, which is what our A6s have. Time to target for these A6s is roughly 25 minutes. Plenty of time, plenty of time. Launch these three Hornets as well, so the Recon Rally launches a group, more walleyes in the sky. Alright, speed it up a tiny bit. So that's our closest group of Thunderbolts. A little bit closer, let's see here. Back into Kuwait, we've got a mechanized infantry unit uh, identified. Mark these guys as hostile as well. So Saudi Group 2 to attack this group. Saudi Group 1 to attack these two. Boom, boom, and boom, that group is down. Nice work, boys. Turn around. We're not invading Kuwait, we're just defending it. You are hostile as well. Look at them go. 
All right, Saudi Group 1 with the extra three T-72s that captured from the Iraqi army. Very powerful at the moment. Taking those enemy ground forces off the map. Okay, our SR-71s falling a little behind the enemy ground forces. Let's find our attack aircraft. Here's the intruders with their walleyes. Actually, send the intruders further on in towards the units that are much closer to Baten, the oil fields at Kasuman. Are these guys as hostile? Because we know they're up to no good. Set our thunderbolts to attack. And off they go. Kafji invasion force is defeated and or recaptured. All right. So our Saudi Army Group 1 has defeated the Invasion Force Center for Gafchi, which is right here across the border. Do I have any videos explaining how recon units work? No, I do not. Um, but if you have any specific questions, maybe I can try to answer them right now. What if they're British recon forces running back to friendlies? Well... Once we show our face, they're going to join us anyways, because the Saudi Army Unit 1 and Saudi Army Unit 2, they've had a very, very productive track record of intimidating enemy forces into capitulating and joining them. So I'm not too worried. If, if it's friendly or enemy forces, we will turn them to our purposes regardless. Okay, you're engaged offensive. You're heading west. The other Thunderbolts are back here. All right, let's watch some Thunderbolts at work. Almost in range. Looks like we've got 18 Mavericks. And of course, our, uh, our ground-pounding cannon if we need it. Blackbird keeping everybody lit. F-15s patrolling the area, keeping them safe from evil enemy Falcons, our main antagonist at this point in the mission. All right, Thunderbolts are about to attack. Survey says mass annihilation, perhaps. Missiles out. Mavericks on their way. All right, Riyadh invasion force defeated and recaptured. Successful attack. Successful attack. All right, these Thunderbolts have four Mavericks left, plus their cannons. Let's revector them over to attack this set of mobile units. Actually, and assign them from their current attack. Assign them here. These walleyes. Let's turn these guys hostile and say auto attack. All right, so Thunderbolts having devastating effects so far. Enemy ground units, we can mark these as hostile again. Let's find our Blackbird and move west. See what else we can find along this path. Walleyes out. Survey says, looking pretty good. Yeah, units destroyed and destroyed. Very efficient. Now we do have one intruder left with two walleyes, so we'll mark these guys as hostile. Tell this intruder to attack. Keep Blackie moving west to uh, illuminate our targets for us. We do have a set of ground forces that we can use to defend ourselves with if our thunderbolts end or other support aircraft fail us. Keep the Thunderbolts moving west.
Ah, okay, so zooming out. Al Kuryat and Turaf. Actually, we heard about these guys earlier. They've been they've been captured. So there's enemy forces in this area that have taken these two cities. We will have to deal with that in a moment. First, I've forgotten my U2s and my Hornets. The ground attack Hornets. Let's unassign them. Move them this way. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Our Tomcats from this zone are refueling over here. Did we not assign any tankers to this track? We did not. Let's fix that. That is unfortunate. Little oversight on my part. Let's find some tankers. Here we are. Assign them to airborne patrol for the west of Saudi Arabia. That should do. Give them some fuel, boys. Give them some fuel. Presidential plane is launching your right. I'm falling asleep at the wheel. Thank you for the reminder. Whoopsie. Yep, yep. We gotta gotta rectify that. We have four Tomcats on the what's this? The midway? Yes, four Tomcats on the midway launches a group. And we have, I believe, three on the Teddy Roosevelt. One here. And three here. We got four in total. Nice round numbers. Alrighty. Let's add a reference point up here. Call this Rally Iran. Support mission active. And we're going to after the fact, go back and assign our Tomcats to that so they get going in the right direction right away. Rally Iran. Done. Rally Iran. And say it with me now. Rally Iran. Alrighty. Off you go, Tomcats. Do your thing. All right, walleyes have done another bang-up job on whatever these units were. Looks like mechanized infantry. Intruders heading home. Uh, what do we have left? Where are my other... Where are my other thunderbolts? Here they are. Send you guys there. And we'll send you up here. More Mavericks out on this group of uh, mobile ground contacts. All right, they only had four w uh, four left on them. Let's see if that's enough. There we go. Al Kabira and all these other places. Invasion forces defeated and/or recaptured. You know, there's just a time where you give up and say, "I can't possibly pronounce that." Uh, we'll just uh, let it go. But either way, we picked up another set of ground units. Looks to be mechanized infantry type 69 main battle tanks. Successfully captured through the unmitigated force of A-10 aerial bombardment. All right, we've got an eagle there. He can't do anything for us. Thunderbolt's heading home. Winchester. These three are still loaded and ready to go. Hornets are on plotted course. Out this way. All right, I think we're good. Airspace is getting pretty busy for for a mission that's starting a week into the Desert Shield campaign. Things are getting pretty uh, pretty busy, pretty pretty busy. Ooh, I have forgotten something though. My U twos, they ain't doing nothing. Assign, unassign you from the rally mission. Let's send you this way. Let's find the enemy units in this area. Same with the other U2, unassigned for the mission. Let's drag them all the way across the border here, see what they can see. All right. SR-71 still on our way, keeping everybody spotted. Let's 
speed it up a little bit. All right, you're going to hover here for a little bit. Let's assign our targets. Off you go, Thunderbolts. Off you go, Eagles. And off you go, Thunderbolts. All right, three attacks. Three separate sets of aircraft. I think we're in good shape, though. Seems like it doesn't take a lot of damage to turn these guys to our side. Which is a positive, uh, a positive outcome. I don't think we'd have enough missiles or aircraft even to uh, turn them back if we had to kill every single one of them. All right, speed it up again. All right, Mavericks out on the group to the north. Hmm, intimidation has not been achieved. Let's try that again. Yeah, we're still working on it. More Mavericks out. Yeah, they're missing. Wow, we finally got them though. Hafer, Al Batan, Al Quasiman, and Batin Oil Fields Invasion Force defeated. Recaptured. Actually, that wasn't this group. Which group was it? Oh. This one hit by our other A10s. Alrighty. That's good. Let's reassign these guys in. They have 14 Mavericks left. That's plenty. Walleyes are out from our Hornets. Let's send our A10s over this way. Engaged offensive. A10s up north here are a little ineffective. Missing a lot of their Maverick shots. Detonated of 1.6 meters from intended target points. We're close, but no cigar, apparently. All right, top secret, another mission, or another, uh, another communique. Looks like we've lost more cities. Let's take a look to, as to where that is. Probably at west. I feel like we've got the east under pretty good lockdown. Indeed, we've lost these three sets of cities here. It's okay, we're working our way west. We're making it happen. We're okay. We're okay so far. The Thunderbolts, though, did attack. To no effect, really. They, they only took out maybe two or three units. This group of mobile contacts still moving forward. We're going to have to vector our newly captured, our newly captured uh, ground forces to attack them. Walleyes inbound. Let's see if our Hornets can get on the board. Wow. One hit, and they've been recaptured. All right. Sorry, boys. He chose the wrong time to flip. All right, so the walleyes did the job. More Thunderbolts heading west onto this group. You're a U2. See if you can be as effective as your SR-71 buddy. Let's get Blackie heading west. Find the rest of these ground forces. U2 has detected with its radar or mobile units up here. To hit those units, what do we need? We need a massive range. No, only 300 nautical miles. We can hit that. That's okay. We can reach that. From Prince Sultan, we've got some strike eagles that aren't doing much of anything. Let's drop, yeah, let's put some uh, cluster bombs on target. Launch as a group. Our F-14s are on their way to the rally point in Iran. Turn on our sensors. We need to see what's going on. Alrighty. As good as it's going to get. Yeah, 
Yeah, U2 is picking up new targets. Our A10s are on their way. What are you? Oh, just an F-15. Units leaving Sultan. Let's vector them to the appropriate location. Up here, actually, let's launch more from Sultan. Take, uh, take these 500-pound bombs. Launch as a group. Alrighty. What if we can group these guys up? They're different models of Tomcats, so probably not, eh? Hmm. Alright, we got uh, eight Tomcats heading north into Iran. Looking for that presidential, uh, presidential transport. Thunderbolts on their way into this set of what I'm assuming are mobile armored and Mechanized infantry fighting vehicles. 14 Mavericks left. Off they go. See if we can achieve some intimidation here. Good night. There they go. Recaptured. Unfortunately, Mavericks were already out, so that's going to hurt. Yeah. Sorry, boys. You should have waved that white flag sooner. All right, so they're taken care of. Prince Sultan Eagles will take care of the ones that are further west. And what do we have here? We've got F-15, F-15, and... This group of recaptured uh, Iraqi equipment will take care of these mobile units here. So I think we're okay. We haven't lost anything in the east. Our oil fields are still defended well. In the west, we've lost five cities. Not ideal. But, well, we'll recapture them. It shouldn't be that difficult. You just have to spot the units and then uh, assign appropriate resources. What do they become when they flip? Uh, they just become units that I can use. So, for example, this group here, type 69 main battle tank. That's what it was prior to flipping. And it has returned to us as that. Now, we've got some BMP-2s. I believe one of our Saudi groups over to the east has some T-72s. So whatever they are, when they, uh, when they approach us, that's what they turn into when they flip. All right, more enemy units here. Mark them as hostile. Blackie and our U2 are moving along and identifying everything. Doing a great job. All right, time to speed up the clock again. Without losing focus on our Tomcats, because they are on a mission. Blackie needs more orders. Let's send him this way. Oh, we have ground attack combat. Annihilation. There we go. Defeated and recaptured. Awesome. All right, so as far as we're aware, there's nothing else in this area. I did send a U-2 around to do some uh, recon for us. But did not turn on her radar. There, let's let's turn her around again. Make sure we haven't missed anything. Nothing snuck by. Perfect. All right, our Tomcats are getting close to having radar coverage of the approaches to the airport in Tehran. Uh, Tofu, I think what's happening here is when these units here flip, their infantry units that are attached to them, which can only run at 5 knots versus 30 knots that these are capable of, these, these armored units are capable of, they get left behind. So when they flip to my side, these infantry units are just, they're, they're way back here because they were left behind by their, uh, by their faster moving 
comrades. So I do have infantry in Iraq. I'm probably not supposed to. But it is what it is. Don't think it's affecting the scenario in any way. All right, I need to get some tanker tracks up for my Tomcats. Before I forget. Uh, where are they? The KA-6s? Assigned to Rally Iran, launches a group. Off they go. Well, we have some mobile contacts detected west of one of our most recently captured units. Send them on the way to intercept. F-15Cs, Tomcats. Where are our Strike Eagles? Here they come. Again, sensors on. We've got a decent uh, fix on them yet, though. Let's lower our eagles down to a lower altitude. See if they get, can get some Mark 1 eyeballs on, on target. All right, Tomcats are in the right area. Just have to wait. They've got about an hour of fuel remaining. Our, our buddy store KA-6s are on their way to tank them. That should keep them in the air a bit longer. Let's assign. I need I need more eyes. I need uh, I need Blackie back here. I need her back here fast. Let's go full military speed Mach three. Zoom. Oh 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 oh! What's happening? One two three four. Looks like we have some enemy aircraft launches. We have two Tomcats on station. That's it at the moment. That is it. Falcons, Eagles. So we have, we have units to the west. Let's unassign. Move you east. Unassign, move you east. What other defensive units do we have in the area? And not a lot, actually. We're, we're a, little, a little sparse. What do we have on our carriers? We have one Hornet. All right, Mr. Hornet, off you go. Godspeed. Tomcats are ready in two hours. Looking on the Theodore Roosevelt. And we got two Tomcats that are set. Assign them to the airborne patrol zone for the Persian Gulf. Launch as a group. Hornets aren't ready. Hornets are ground attack. All right. We need more fighters and we need them now. Assuming there's more, uh, there's more enemy contacts where that came from. Uh, let's see, two eagles here, eleven hours. Oof. Two here. All right, so we'll launch you guys. Just actually launch you to hover where you're at. You're pretty well positioned if they're coming south to uh, intercept. Owen Wilson on alert five. Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Launch you individually as well. All right. Slow down time compression a little bit here. We've got a lot going on. We're, we're spread pretty, pretty well across west, east, and north. Let's not miss anything. Okay, so what are we doing here? Blackie is coming back to recon this set of ground units. More enemy... Air contacts are launching. Don't know if they're going for my carrier or if they're going for a ground attack. They're heading southeast. Check their vector. 
roughly here. So it's a quick dog leg out to sea, and it's a quick dog leg into King Abdulaziz and King Fahd. Hmm. Radar on. These are Mirage F1 EQ5s, which are armed possibly with exosets for ship attack, magics for IR, uh, for close range dogfighting, super R530 is 22 nautical mile range, semi active radar homing, general purpose bombs, rockets. Okay, so I'd either assume air to air or maybe exoset armed. Looks like the uh, the attack radius is rather large. Let's move this zone here just so they cross it. Need to get my Tomcats in the game, but I don't really want to manually control it. These Tomcats up in Iran are doing their best to cover the area with their radar. I think we're pretty safe there. Blackie's almost back in place. Should have a fix on these guys any moment. There they are. Thank you, Blackie. Strike Eagles away. These Strike Eagles north. Let's have Blackie orbit here. Tomcat, Eagle, Tomcat. All right. Engaged offensive. I don't think you're doing it right, buddy. Okay. Unassign. This way. Need your radar on. There you go. So we'll fire at 60 nautical mile range, range distance because we did adjust that uh, weapons release, release authorization for Phoenix missiles. Any second now. There we go. Phoenix away. Smirk all these is hostile. We know they're we know they're up to no good. Get these eagles moving north. If it is exoset missiles, we want to make sure we intercept them before they get into range, which is roughly speaking, according to the range circles here, 55 nautical miles. Oof. Rough. Another top secret message. The communities of Rafa. Radat, Habas had been captured by Iraqi forces. All right. Let's take a look. What does that mean? These have already turned red. Has anything else turned red or did we miss it? Hmm. Well, either way, apparently we lost some more cities. Strike Eagles are not attacking, they're forming up. Why are they forming up? Two of three. What's going on here? We have two Strike Eagles waiting to form up with a third. That was coming from Prince Sultan Air Base, right? Where's the third? Where is the third? Preparing to launch. Already in one hour. Really? That was a mistake. Sorry, guys. Abort that launch. Now they should be able to attack. Off they go. Engaged offensive. Our Tomcats are going to refuel. The air war in southern, uh, just over the border into uh, northeastern Saudi Arabia is going. I don't think we shot down anything though. Not even close. Not even close. Let's expand this. 
Unassigned. We want to... Uh, wait, you're all at a weapons, are you? Some of you are at a weapon, some of you aren't. We'll sign you to the mission anyways, just for temporary, uh, temporary sake. Persian Gulf Airborne Patrol. Just until we deal with this threat. More Tomcats. All right, we hit an SU-24. One enemy down. A lot more to go. I'll reassign you to the Persian Gulf Patrol. Invasion forces have been defeated. Which ones were those? Okay, these ones here with the two Strike Eagles assigned to them, who are now heading home, RTB. Excellent. Our SR-71 is do still doing yeoman's work, keeping everybody spotted. Bombs out on this set of ground units. 30 500-pound bombs left. Okay, we can let that... They're, they're attacking... Automatically, nothing much we have to do there. The air war, however, seems to be getting more and more complicated. Lots of units being launched, not a lot of defense available to us. We've spent a lot of our uh, eagles, a lot of our tomcats, a lot of our hornets already. Maybe what we can do is move Task Force LaSalle as fast as they can to the west, get their uh, get their missiles in the game. Give us some more defense. I did kill an SU-25 as well. We killed a Mirage. We're killing stuff. Just not uh, not as effectively as I would like. Let's make sure my mission is set. With the appropriate weapons release author weapons release authorization. Uh, sorry, the w w correct weapon state. I think I did change that back. Yes, I did. Awesome. So we will use guns if we have to. Another mirage down, and another mirage down. All right, we're starting to have an effect. Let's assign these Falcons to the... Moving, moving all of our, our aerial resources to the Persian Gulf right now to defend against this attack. As best we can. We've defeated the forces here. We've turned these two cities back to blue. Blackie's going to move over here and keep these guys lit. Alrighty. Not only are we uh, defeating the ground forces, we're also amassing quite a large army ourselves. That may come in handy in the future. Mirage versus Tomcat. Tomcat wins. Uh, we're still tanking. Tomcats that are uh, covering Tehran are still tanking. I have a feeling we might miss that uh, miss that uh, presidential transport. More aircraft. More aircraft. They're everywhere. I must have more aerial resources somewhere. F-15C move you over to the other troll zone same for you got a U2 just happily flying through all the enemy forces 
No care is given. One F-16, we don't really care about that. Not enough to do much for us. I want massive forces. What do we have? We got ground attack falcons. Four armed with sidewinders. Okay, let's assign them to the Persian Gulf mission. Launch its group. All resources, I guess. We, we've pretty much assigned all of our resources. Half of our planes are being reloaded, though. Not really. Don't have a lot we can react with. All right, so what's our next problem here? We've got two Strike Eagles on plotted course. Let's send them up here to attack. Off they go. Tomcat, Tomcat, Eagle. You too. Another SU-24 is down. Another SU-24 is down. All right, it's starting to look a bit more, uh, a bit more manageable. Although a lot of our, a lot of our planes are on the way back to, back to base. SC-24 down again. Doesn't look like these planes are uh, being escorted in any way. The Mirages do have a sizable uh, range on their airborne bubble. On their aerial warfare bubble, sorry. Which would be the magics that have, not the magics, the, uh, what are they, the R530s? Which have the 22 nautic mile range, but they don't seem to be using those. So we're actually uh, not under a lot of threat, air to air wise. Another, fl uh, another fencer down. It's becoming a turkey shoot. There's a little, little, uh, little. A little rough there for a while. But I think we got it under control now. All right. King Fahad. We've got Aardvarks. Let's assign you. Launches a group. Then we'll send you north into the northwestern side of Saudi Arabia. Another mirage down. We got sidewinders left, not a lot of sparrows. We got cannons, if we need them. Yeah, another mirage down. Another uh, SU-24 down. Looks like the enemy forces have petered out. We've got one, two, three, four left. All right, these guys need to be assigned to the mission. Somehow they forgot. Off they go. Another sidewinder hit, another barrage down. Right, why are you guys not attacking anybody? Unassigned for mission. Assigned to Persian Gulf. Engaged offensive. There we go. There we go. RTB. <laughs> they were right on the edge of bingo fuel. Awesome. All right, does nobody have anything? Nobody have anything left. We have three F-15s unassigned. Let's assign them to the mission. Off they go. That should be enough to finish off the remainder of the enemy attack. Again, not sure if they're going for the carriers or for, a, for an air base. Looks like some of the Mirages were armed with uh, a long-range weapon, probably an Exocet, so I, I would guess. A carrier attack? But we may never know. 
We'll have to interrogate one of the hundreds of people who just ejected from the uh, enemy attack fleet. Enemy air attack fleet. Let's see what actually happened. Oh, what's this? We have a bogey heading from Tehran to Iraq. Hmm. We're expecting from Iraq to Tehran. It's probably not what we're looking for. We know there are commercial jets in the air. Like this guy here. Probably commercial. So we don't want to uh, we don't want to react too harshly. Create an incident. All right, the Persian Gulf is clear once again. Awesome. We've exhausted pretty much all of our uh, airborne warfare assets, at least in the, on the east side of the map. Strike Eagles from Prince Sultan are heading onto this group here. Try, uh, try to take them out and flip these three cities back to our control. Blackie's still going strong. Got another two hours of fuel in her. Really liking these SU, uh, SU-71s. Really liking. The only thing we haven't tested with them is really their ability to outrun enemy missiles. All right, our K-6s are heading home. They are bingo fuel. Our Tomcats seem to get a little bit of fuel, but not a lot. What is this? Unknown bogey. Contact report says... Fire control radar air-to-air. -air. Uh oh Guys, look this way. Oh boy. Okay. Five unknown contacts. One is confirmed as a MiG-25 Foxbat. Could this be an escort? It looks like it's an escort. We have a very slow moving contact here. That is probably our transport. SU-71, sorry, this SR-71, sorry. It's been a long day, guys. I apologize if I'm if I'm not getting all my words right. It happens. All right, so let's unassign these Tomcats from their rally point. Send them this way manually. Unassign, send this way. And unassign, send this way. All right. So there is one Phoenix missile already in range. Going to manually attack with two phoenixes. Max range, we're hoping. We're hoping that we'll uh, take out the... Uh, well, we're <laughs> actually two things. We're, we're hoping this is actually the uh, very important, the, the VIP who is transiting to Tehran from Iraq. Uh, it could very well be a commercial airliner, but the fact there's at least four escorts means it's probably not. I'm hoping. Really hoping. We did reflip these three cities and this armored group. Let's send this armored group over here. See what we can find. Strike Eagles still have eight dumb bombs on them. Let's send them with Blackie over this way, see if we can find the enemy units. All right, Phoenixes are close. There we go. We got it. Iraqi presidential transport en route to Tehran was shot down by coalition forces. President Saddam Hussein was not on board, but several senior military officials were identified. Intelligence recovered from the crash site revealed the location of the invasion command center within Iraq. This site has been marked on the map. Immediately initiate helicopter insertion of Spec Ops personnel in order to pinpoint the invasion command HQ for destruction. Successful completion of this mission should result in ending the current Iraqi invasion advance. Additionally, to this end, individual Iraqi invasion forces can be neutralized by destroying the command vehicles within each of the invasion groups. 
All right, so we have coordinates north 30, east 45. North 30, east 45. Let's see, north 30, east 45, roughly here. Spec Ops Landing Zone. Oh, it's defined for us. Awesome. So we have, we had Chinooks at King Fod, is it? Yes. With Rangers and Troops. Launch as a group. We have, <laughs> we actually have very little with which to escort them. We have been very well drained of our aerial warfare resources. Don't have a lot going for us in terms of defending them, but we'll send them in anyways. We'll send them in anyways. Hmm. Iran let us do this over their airspace. Apparently, we can send our boys home. Let's send them home because we need, we need our fighters back. We really do. <laughs> we need our fighters back and in the game. We're a little defenseless at the moment. We have three eagles up that have four sidewinders left, and that's it. All right, helicopters have launched. Our Chinooks are ready to go. Off they go. Well, what's this? F-16. Of course, our, our, our favorite our favorite thing to deal with are F-16 Block 32 Peace Falcons. Or Peace Vector 2 Falcons. Let's see. There, there's got to be something left that we can, we can use here. Got to be something left. We need an escort. We can't send these guys without escort deep in enemy territory. Can we? I don't think we can. Two hours. Oh, we have two eagles armed with a light load out of sparrows. All right, boys. You're the escort. Have fun. Did the CGs have any escorts for the Chinooks? In terms of uh, helicopters, I don't think so. Sea Kings, Maritime Surveillance, and Anti-Submarine Warfare loadouts. Roosevelt, I believe, is the same way. Barracudas, Anti-Submarine. Cargo. The uh, Task Force. Where is it here? The LaSalle Task Force. Sea Skuas, Torpedoes, Maritime Surveillance. Yeah, nothing in terms of escorting for the Chinooks. We'll have to send them with eagles and anything else we can spare. We got we got some thunderbolts. I guess we could send some thunderbolts with them. Let's try that. I mean, it's better than nothing, right? Better than nothing. This A fifty needs to go down, though. It's the eyes in the sky. Where's our... Here, we got a set of Falcon... Or Tomcats. Unassign them. Send them off to get, get the mainstay. All right, Blackie's found us more targets. Good old Blackie. Our SU-71 Black, which is actually getting low on fuel. Might have to uh, replace her on station soon. All right, Eagles on their way. Here come the Thunderbolts on their way.
Yeah, this falcon is just kind of orbiting. Not doing much. Which is okay. I don't really have much to deal with. I, I don't really have much that can take care of him right now anyways. It's actually... Let's send a U2 in. See what we can see. Oh, darn it. I launched my F-111s and they're still orbiting. I do that all the time. Okay, we have 72 Mark 82 bombs on these F-111s. We'll send them north to deal with the uh, the ground contacts here that Blackie has picked up for us. And speed it up a tiny bit. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, mechanized infantry platoon has picked up a missile. Oh. So our F-16 buddy finally decided to move in on us. What's he after? What is he after? I don't know what he's after. What's he firing on? Huh. I don't know what he's firing on. Is there an invisible unit here somewhere? No, not that I can see. Those pistols went into the sand. All right. These Chinooks are going to take a while to get there. But they have the range. They have a range of uh, 1,100 nautical miles. Oh, yeah, we got plenty of... Plenty of Plenty of range to get there, so we're going to make them dogleg a bit further away from Kuwait. Keep them away from where the enemy fighters seem to be coming from. F-16 jammed and fired nothing? I don't know. It's a good question. I have no idea. What are we doing? Our strike eagles are on their way into attack. Blackie's hovering, keeping everybody lit. We got airborne, airborne, airborne. No one with ground attack munitions aside from our aardvarks who are back here. They're on their way. It'll take them a while to get there, though. They will get there soon enough. All right, let's focus. Focus, focus, focus. We've got roughly 20 minutes left in the stream. I don't have a hard cut tonight because it is my regular streaming time, so if we have to go a bit longer, I can. I feel like we're getting close to a resolution. I feel like we're close. All right, what are you? You are still Sidewinder only armed. You're Sparrow armed. May as well do it. Let's get these guys out of the way. Can't have our helicopters walking into them. Right, tens are still on the on the move. Sparrow should be out shortly. I wish I could actually see the contact report for these for these air bases, but for some reason I can't. At least tell me if they've got any more uh, F-16s left, because I'm I'm wary of sending my aircraft too close to Kuwait. I know that's where I know that's where uh, most of their F-16s are located, if not all of them. All right. 
point. Spare one falcon. Survey says it's a kill. All right. So our F-15 is going to go back to guarding our helicopters. Anything out east happening? Nothing out east. Our to Tomcats are on their way back from intercepting the VIP heading to Tehran. He bombs out on him. No, he is not. A solidified contact. Let's get Blackie a bit closer to solidify him a bit. A bit more. There he is. There he is. Get him, boys. And what do we miss? Machine gun infantry. Oh, well. Let's unassign this attack target because we don't want the machine gun infantry. We want the command unit. I'm going to kill the command unit. All right, the U-2 is over the landing zone. Don't see anything, but I hear... I hear we have missiles being fired. Why do we have missiles being fired? There's nothing here. Someone is wasting all of their gun ammunition as well. Is, there, is, is Am I missing something? Am I missing something? I don't think I am. <laughs> all right. So these... Are these guys? Yeah, it's these guys. They're firing their cannon. They're engaged offensive against nothing. Yeah, they're firing sidewinders at nothing. All right, let's assign them from that mission. Reassign them, see if that uh, kicks them into gear. He's gone rogue. We have a broken falcon. All right, Thunderbolts are here. Eagles are here. Chinooks are way back here. They're going to get there. They're going to get there. It's just going to take them a while. All right, we've got bingo fuel in 14 minutes on our Tomcats heading towards the mainstay. I feel like we can, uh, we can get them. I think we have a good chance. It's going to be a long-range shot, but it's, it's, a, it's a big target. Yeah, maybe a glitch. Maybe. First time I've seen that one uh, since the release, though. Maybe the uh, maybe the dunes were so hot they were setting off the sidewinders. Although it is 3 o'clock in the morning, so maybe not. All right, Mr. Phoenix. Whoop, wrong button. Let's do your thing. What's the max range for the AIM-54Cs? It's 100 nautical miles. The A variant is 90. A variant's what we're firing here. All right. Looking good. He's moving towards us. So we got extra fuel to play with. Extra energy on the missile. It's gone active, and we missed. <laughs> of course we missed. Heading to refuel point. No, you're not. We're finishing off this aircraft. With everything you've got. All right. 
So we're mad dogging them. It looks like our Tomcats decided they need to go for fuel after all. The Phoenixes are active. Looking for the target. We'll see if they actually find them. And we missed them. Not guided by the Tomcat. Rats. All right, well, I'm not going to fight the refuel. Let them go. Let them go. We'll just uh, assign them to attack once they're done. So they'll go refuel. They've got one Phoenix left, and they will get the A50 when they're done refueling. All right, we're hovering. Our F-15s are waiting. Not having a lot to do while they wait for the Thunderbolts and the helicopters. Again, we're firing Sidewinders at who? Who are we firing Sidewinders at? I don't see any enemy air contacts. So we're going to assume a glitch. In the meantime, our F-111s are approaching their target zone. I'm going to tell them to attack these two sets of units. And once they destroy them, that should flip these final two cities back to friendly. Did I get the did I get the range wrong? Let me see here. The A variant. 100 nautical miles. Okay, I was uh, off by 10 nautical miles. C variant is 120. Wow, I was way off. Sorry, guys. C variant of the Phoenix is 120, and the A variant is. Uh, what, what did I say? A hundred. All right, helicopters, will you be? Our Thunderbolts are waiting. Our Eagles are waiting. Way back here. Come on, guys. We have a scenario to win. Let's go. We've got a U-2 hovering over the drop zone. There's nothing there. Nor is it setting off any air defenses. One confusing thing is we've got a... Oh. Hey, we actually may have just won. So the, uh, the Aardvarks attacked. They killed the units at these two cities right here. And that seems to have been the uh, victory point. Okay. Let's pause for a sec. At this point in the scenario, the player will have succeeded and be transferred to the next scenario in the campaign. All right, so we've won. We've won. It's a minor victory. Not amazing, but uh, sufficient, I would say. All right, so it looks like the victory conditions were either eliminating all the ground forces, which we did, uh, to gain victory, or landing the troops here. Now, we're still going to go. We've still got about 15 minutes left in the stream, so we're going to walk this through to the end, see what our schnooks can do. There's not a lot else going on in this scenario. I feel like we've got uh, got victory assured, or secured. Our artifacts are heading back home. They, they launched all 72 500-pound bombs and uh, had massive effect. You are still an A50. Here come our here come our Tomcats, fully refueled, fully ready to go. Going full afterburner. Looking for revenge. There they go. Revenge is sweet. Nope, it missed. And it missed. And it missed. Oh, we got it. Well, good thing we had eight missiles on board. Send them back home. Oh, they're heading back to refuel. It's unassigned from that, head them back home. They have to refuel first. All right, that's fine, I guess. Our Chinooks are on their way in. Crossing the border now. 2,000 feet. Yeah, enemy launched another mainstay, so that was a short-lived victory. 
in terms of poking out their eyes. <laughs> oh, we'll get them there, don't you worry. We'll get them there if, if, if we have to drop them and let them walk. All right, let's move you guys up here. Move you up here. Oh, there's things here. Well, Mr. U2, we've had you hovering for like an hour and a half, waiting. Why the heck did you not tell us? Hmm? 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 All right, so what do we have? We got armored T-72s. We have mechanized infantries. Oi, 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 oi. How are our... Oh, of course, our Thunderbolts just uh, get dead for fuel. That's all right. When they're done, they can head back this way. <laughs> That's kind of kind of awkward. Like, what are you doing, you two? It's a clear sky, very light rain. Not a lot in the way uh, of these guys seeing what they're up against. Let's get our helicopters over here for the moment. And, well, we have tomahawks. We could use tomahawks, I guess. Let's see, what else do we have? AGM-123 skippers. 14 nautical mile range. Laser guided mobile units. I like it. Let's go. <laughs> Chinooks are a bingo fuel, are they? No, they've got plenty of Oh, they are. Wow. Can we land and wait? Okay, so the... the this set of Chinooks has plenty of fuel left. This one is almost at bingo. Rats. All right. Well, on the bright side, we've won the scenario. Uh, this, this little extra... Uh, this little extra bit of play to try to get the Rangers to the drop zone... It's not going to work out very well. It didn't time that very well. My A-10s went for refuel. My uh, Rangers couldn't drop. And my U-2 was surprised. He's just surprised. Like, he didn't see anything. They they just uh, popped into existence when our Chinooks showed up, apparently. That, that's what the U-2 is saying, at least. All right, guys. Well, we have won the scenario. It, it, overall, it's been a successful playthrough. Minor victory is, is the score, but any victory is a good victory. All right, so let's recap. What have we done tonight? We have defended. We have defended Saudi Arabia with a minimal coalition force against attack by Iraq, who captured Kuwait and then pushed right on through into Saudi Arabia. We did lose a few cities, mainly on the west side. Uh, the east side of Saudi Arabia was pretty well defended. We had enough coalition forces and enough weapons to turn them back, to capture them and uh, turn them back. A whole day left. Yeah, the scenario was 38 hours. And what are we at now? We're at 31. So we, we need seven hours in game time to accomplish this task. And to be honest with you, the what the forces that we're left with, uh, we have roughly five or six new army groups captured from the Iraqis. So uh, a lot of new units that we can use uh, going forward if this were, say, uh, if these units were able to be moved to the next uh, to the next mission, which I don't think they are. Looking at the score... Let's see, what, what did we lose? What did we lose? Yes. Yes, of course, we only lost one plane. <laughs> and of course it had to be the, uh, the F-15. The only, the only plane that is known for its uh, perfect combat record. Dr. Zayas had to go out and lose an eagle, of course. It wouldn't be a playthrough without me losing an eagle. We did uh, kill some friendly units, of course, uh, who flipped to our side as inbound munitions were on their way. In terms of uh, kills, we destroyed eight F-16s. Feels like a lot more, but only eight apparently. Six Recon Phantoms. Uh, what else? Nine SU-24s, 12 Mirage F-1 EQ-5s, and one A-50 mainstay. Uh, I think they are the D variant. Let's take a look here. They are the D variant. Can they refuel? Can they? Can they? Can they? Properties. Night navigation. No, they cannot. 
They cannot. All right, so it was a successful playthrough. We accomplished by one or two, which was to uh, go very quickly through the order of battle, which uh, didn't really do it justice. Uh, but again, we had a three three hour window to get through the scenario, and I really wanted to get through it because uh, unlike a preview stream where where I I'm trying to keep some suspense away from you, uh, so that you're still interested in the final product, uh, Desert Storm is released, so you're able to go out and purchase it on your own at the Steam Store. You can play it through at your leisure, and this was meant to show you uh, some of the fun aspects of some of the hypothetical situations that you come across in this Desert Storm campaign, of course. The second mission being this one, the Thin Red Line. All right. So I think we're going to call the stream there. We've had a successful playthrough. Um, and hopefully the goal of, of you know, uh, celebrating the release of this this uh, expansion for Command has been successful. Hopefully you had a good time. Hopefully you're licking at your lips, you're chomping at the bit to get in there and play it yourself. Um, and yeah, I had a fun time playing it for you. Hope you guys had a good night watching and the plan for here on out is we'll close the scenario off we'll close the stream off if you want to know more about what i'm doing uh once again i'm dr zayas for the stoic frog gaming channel it's been my pleasure to stream for you tonight here on the slytherin group twitch page uh, stoicfrog.tv that's where you can find me uh, that's where you'll find my command content i am playing through the desert storm expansion right now as well uh, the first episode went up this morning for the very first uh, mission called Invasion. So if you're interested in following my long-form playthrough through from the very first scenario all the way to the last one, I'm probably going on for six months to nine months because it takes a while to get through these missions. Uh, that's going on at stoicfrog.tv. So I appreciate you all coming out and hope you had a good uh, good time. And uh, we'll see you again next time. So once again, for the Slytherin Group, I'm Dr. Zayas of the Stoic Frog Gaming Channel. Thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you again next time. Take care.